I've already prepared and cut these blanks up and I already screwed up because I read 50 millimeters as a length here but that's just the measurement from the inside before these bosses the entire cylinders are actually 54 in length <laughs> I also left this one which is going to become the two valve chests as one long piece because I'm going to have to make it into a rectangle first. I'll put it on the shaper and while that's working on the shaper I'm going to use the big advantage of the shaper by letting it do its thing and then walk over to the lathe and bore out the cylinders. I've blown through the passageways here and they seem to be free where they should be free and blocked up where they ought to be blocked up. Next step will now be reaming out the bores because I left some material in here to compensate for potential warping or scaling during the soldering job. For whatever reason it didn't occur to me to leave some extra material in the valve bores so I'm going to have to make do with the way it is now. Um, you know, it's, it's not that critical, it's going to maybe leak a little bit or it isn't. We shall see once the whole machine is up and running. Looks a little bit dissatisfied, don't you think?
The caps are ready to be installed. Before we do that, however, we'll have to first make the pistons with their rods and the oiler flanges which get screwed into these because they determine in which orientation I'm going to press these guys in. Um, no one would like the oiler to point downwards, right? Well, the cylinder and valve chest assembly is finally complete, which is one big load of my chest. Um, as you can see, the pistons are going smoothly without binding up or scoring anything. Um, I want to finish this whole assembly up in this video, so I am now going to make the valve rods, I'm going to make the cross heads, and I'm going to make the oiler filler caps for the ends and that shall be it. Mm -hmm.